it's time to share my top 10 Outlook tips with you. Now, don't miss out on these because I'm sure you're going to find something important here. Now, I have to say my favorite one is number eight. So I'm curious what yours is. Comment below and let me know. Let's get started. Tip number one, never miss a game or TV show. If you're a sports fan, this tip is for you. Did you know that you can automatically add your team schedule to your Outlook calendar? It doesn't matter if it's your college or a pro team. And it's not just for sports. You can also add the dates of your favorite TV show in case you're still into TV shows. So let me show you. With your internet browser, go to office.com and sign in. Then select Outlook and open your calendar. Then click on Add Calendar on the side here. Let's say you want to import the schedule for the Los Angeles Lakers. Click on MBA and select the Lakers. That's it. Already added to your calendar. Let's close this. You'll see Los Angeles Lakers in My Calendars and you have all their matches as events in your calendar. When you click on more options on the side here, you can change the color for the events or delete the schedule again. The same works for TV shows as well. Click on add calendar and select TV. Select your time zone and use the filter to find your show. If you're in the US, you can even add the school calendar for your kids. Just click on schools, enter your zip code, and it's gonna give you a list of all schools to make your selection. Once you added these calendars on office.com, the events are gonna show up on all your Outlook calendars across your devices, so including Outlook for desktop. This way, staying on top of the action has never been easier. Number two, color code your calendar. I'm a big fan of color coding. In a previous video, I showed you how you can color code emails where you're only on CC. This way you can see right away that the message isn't directly addressed to you without even opening it. Now, another way to take advantage of color coding is in your calendar. So for example, you can turn all meetings with your boss red or show meetings in a different location in yellow. It makes it easy to quickly get an overview. So let me show you how you can do it. First, let's color all meetings organized by the boss in bright red. In your calendar, go to the View tab and select View Settings. Then click on Conditional Formatting. Now we'll add a new rule, so let's give it a name and select a color we want for these items. Let's go with red. Then we need to add the condition. In this case, it's simple. We'll just go with the boss's name for the organizer. Then click on OK and Again. Now everything from the boss is bright red. Let's do another one. Let's say we want to color all appointments with the location building C in yellow. So let's go back to view settings and conditional formatting. Let's add a new rule, call it location. And for color, we go with yellow, not a condition. We somehow need to specify the location. It's not under appointments and meetings, and we also don't see it under more choices. So let's go to advanced. Click on the drop down field and select all appointment fields. That's quite a list. Here we have location. Select it, and now let's specify the condition. We could go with is exactly, but to be safer, let's go with contains. For value, put in building C. When you're done, click on add to list. Then just confirm with OK and again. And now everything that's scheduled in building C is shown in yellow. Now, these are just two examples to get you started. Adjust the conditional formatting to your own requirements and color code away. Number three, email your calendar. So let's say you need to agree on a time for a meeting with someone else. Now, it's easy if it's within your organization because you can check everyone's availability with the scheduling assistant. But what about external contacts? Instead of mailing back and forth until you find a slot that works, you could just email your calendar to the other person and let them do the work. Here's how. Create a new email, then click on Insert and select Calendar. Now you can select the date range. That would be the range where you want to find a time for your meeting. You can either use the presets here or you can specify the date like this. Then you can select the amount of details that you want to share. Down here, you have an option to just show time within your working hours. This way you can eliminate weekends or late hours from the options. 
You can set your working hours in the calendar outlook options by clicking on set working hours. When you're done, just click on OK and it's going to insert your calendar into the email. Now you can send this off and the other person gets a full overview and can easily pick a date. Number four, show total number of emails. Per default in Outlook, you'll always see a number for unread items next to your folders. For example, here you're going to see in blue the number of unread items I have in my inbox. That may make sense for certain folders. But for example, for my action required folder here, it doesn't. I only move messages there that I still need to work on. For this folder, I would much rather see the total messages I still have to work on. This is how you can change that. Right click on the folder and select properties. And here, instead of number of unread items, select show total number of items. Click OK. And now you can see the total number of emails in the folder in square brackets. Number five, add quick actions. In Outlook for Microsoft 365, when you hover over an email, you'll get the option to flag or delete the item. But you can add additional actions to this. In the ribbon, click on follow up and select set quick actions. You can define your quick actions. I'll go with archive for quick action one and move for action two. Click OK. And now you can see that we have two additional options. This can be helpful when you quickly scan your emails and use these quick actions to process them on the fly. Number six, schedule shorter meetings. We've all been there back to back meetings when you don't even have time to run from one meeting room to another one or to log out from one chat and log into the next. Well, that's over now. Let's shorten them. In Outlook, click on file and then options. Click on calendar. Here you'll see this option, shorten appointments and meetings. Activate it with the checkbox. With these drop downs, you can specify how many minutes you want to shorten meetings that are scheduled for under an hour and over an hour. I'll go with 10 minutes for both of them and click on OK. Now, when we schedule a meeting in the calendar, it's going to automatically suggest a shorter meeting and we get to have that bathroom break. Number seven, drag and drop from Outlook to Teams. In the past, when you wanted to transfer a file attachment from Outlook to Teams, you had to first save it to your local drive and then upload it to Teams. But now we can just drag and drop it. So from your email, just drag the file attachment directly to your Teams channel or chat, and it's going to automatically upload it to your OneDrive or SharePoint. Number eight, resize your images. Sometimes you need to attach pictures to your email. Now with cameras today, the size of the file may be way too big. Fortunately, there is an easy fix for this. So let's say I want to send this picture, which is 28 megabytes. Just right click on the picture and select send to and then mail recipient. You get this pop up window where you can change the picture size. You can go with large and you're still going to be fine. In this case, it reduced it to 384 kilobytes. Then just click attach and it will resize it and attach it to your message. If you already copied the picture into the message and then you realize it's too big, there is another way. Click on file and up here, instead of do not resize images, select resize large images and it's gonna automatically reduce it. Then just go back to your message and send it. Now, when we check the sent items, we can see that the size was reduced. Number nine, clean up your conversations. Sometimes you have these emails that just go back and forth. And if you're not diligent in cleaning up your inbox, this is going to fill up quickly. You don't need all the older emails in the thread because they're already included in the most recent email. So a simple way to get rid of these redundant messages is to use Outlook's cleanup tool. Now for the longest time, I didn't know what that did. Now I do. So let me show you. Let's say I have this conversation with multiple people that just goes on and on. You may want to keep the most recent one, but you want to get rid of the older messages in the thread. This is when you can use cleanup. It's right here next to the delete button. When you click it, you get three options. Cleanup conversation. This is going to review the currently selected conversation only. Cleanup folder. This is going to review threads in the selected folder. Now I recommend using that one or use the last one if you want to include subfolders. 
Now I'll go with cleanup folder and this deletes all the redundant messages in the folder. It's a great way to get rid of clutter. Number 10, preview upcoming calendar events. To view upcoming appointments while you're in email mode, update your view by going to the view tab and over here on the right, click on the icon to do bar and select calendar. This is gonna open an additional pane on the right and display the current month and your upcoming calendar events. Now you also have the option to add tasks to this pane. This helps you keep an eye on upcoming tasks and flagged emails. But currently the functionality of tasks is limited in the desktop version of Outlook, so I recommend using the to-do app instead. Now, if you'd like to learn more about managing your tasks with the to-do app, make sure that you check out this video. Link to it is also in the description. So these are my favorite tips for Outlook. If you have a favorite one, comment below and let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have other tips and tricks of your own, let me know also in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.